Hey there, what's up guys? My name is Useless Mango and I'd like to welcome you all to today's Grand Theft Auto 5 video where I'm going to be bringing you guys the fourth installment in the five features to be added to GTA Online series. So as always, if you have an epic idea that you think should be in the next five features to be added to GTA Online video, then let me know your very best ideas down in the comments section below or you can even tweet them at me and the link to my Twitter is always in the description. Now if you haven't seen the last three five features to be added to GTA Online videos, then I do recommend that you go watch them as there's some really cool features that do have potential in GTA Online if they're ever added and I'll leave the link to the playlist in the description for you guys to go check out after you've finished watching this video. But anyways, if you do go on to enjoy the video or you find it interesting at all, then do be sure to drop the video a like rating and if you are new around here and you like my GTA tier 5 content, then why not hit that subscribe button? It only takes 2 seconds and it means that you won't miss any of my future uploads. Now with that out of the way, let's get it started. Alright, so let's kick things off with new jobs that we can apply for and complete within free mode lobbies. Now while Grand Theft Auto is primarily about living the life of a criminal in some of the US's best fictional states, sometimes it would be nice to be able to play the good guy and instead of completing heists or running a criminal empire, you could work as a police officer, paramedic or even a firefighter. Jobs like these currently only exist in in the fact that they're completed by NPCs who react to what we do in the game. So obviously if we start shooting around free mode then we're going to receive a wanted level and the police are going to be dispatched to stop us. Similarly if another player blows up vehicles or kills other NPCs the fire department and paramedics are going to be dispatched to the scene. Now these are good features with the exception of the police that could have been even better if players could actually work for. Not only would this allow for better roleplay opportunities but it would also give players access to some of the special services vehicles that we don't usually have access to without stealing them. It could also bring new vehicles into online that we haven't seen before, so maybe things like the Buffalo Police Cruiser or even different ambulances or fire engines. And it doesn't just have to be special services jobs, Players could even work in real estate to help other players find new properties that's best for them, or players could even be hired as full-time pilots flying players and or NPCs around the state of San Andreas. There are so many possibilities that could happen if free mode jobs were ever a thing brought to GTA Online and if you guys have any ideas for any more free mode jobs then do be sure to let me know your very best ideas in the comments section right now. Next up on today's list is a rather controversial feature but after the recent further adventure in finance and felony DLC it now makes more sense than before and it's the ability to share money with other players. Now I covered this a bit in my last video when I was talking about whether or not the finance and felony DLC actually lived up to the hype and one of the main letdowns I discussed was that CEOs cannot share money with associates or other players after completing CEO cell missions. But this feature is something that people have requested to be in the game for a long time. But think of the benefits. Imagine if you're a low level and you're struggling to make enough money to get yourself started and you don't have a high end apartment yet so you can't complete heists or you don't have enough money to register as a VIP or you don't have enough money to purchase an office and a warehouse to complete CEO missions. Maybe a friend who has some money to spare can send you some through the in-game Maze Bank website. Now I know there's already the option to share money that you've earned from a previous job with other players, but there isn't a way to share a sum of money without earning it first in a mission. And this is where the controversy kicks in. Because money glitches and modded money isn't something that's going to disappear overnight as much as both we and Rockstar want it to. And if players are easily able to spawn in money or create duplicate money from duplicating vehicles and selling them at the Los Santos Customs, then there would be nothing stopping people from doing money glitches or gathering modded money and simply transferring it to another player, therefore effectively laundering the money. Now the issue of modded money being spawned in is really something specific to the PC version of GTA 5, as it's a lot easier to apply mods to and get online on this platform, but modders can also be found on console versions of the game although it is a lot harder to do as compared to PC. But modded money is something that does affect all platforms in some way or another. It's mainly money glitches that are more common on the console versions, but nevertheless, if Rockstar can somehow find a way to stop or at least drastically decrease the amount of money that's gained by illegitimate transactions, then the ability to share money between players is something that could work really well in online. Okay, so moving on, and the next feature on this list is the ability to sell Pegasus vehicles. Personally, I don't know why this feature isn't already in online, but I'm pretty sure that if you did have the ability to sell at least some of your Pegasus vehicles, you probably would. Now don't get me wrong, some of them are useful and fun to use, but some of them just have no point and in my opinion, are a waste of money. For example, vehicles like the Crusader, which isn't the Meriwether Jeep, but the actual army Jeep that can be found in online and purchased for $225,000. Now for a Jeep that you can simply get a hold of if you go to the military base, this is a lot of money, and personally, 
I can think of better things to spend 225 grand on. But I have it anyway, but if I did have the option, then I would most likely sell it. Now it's the same story for other vehicles, and I want to bring the Brigade into this, but even though it's rubbish, I would still want to keep it as it's rather fun to drive. But vehicles that spawn naturally in the world and are common if you look in the right places are the main vehicles that people would get rid of. So some, if not most, of the boats in GT Online you can find at the boat dock areas of the map, but you can also purchase them in online, and the same goes for some aircraft like the Titan and the standard Luxor. You can spend, or should I say waste money on them as a Pegasus vehicle, or you can travel to the same locations you would normally pick them up from and get one for free. Okay, so our next feature on today's list is something that I think would be pretty cool in GT Online and change the way that we buy vehicles and that's functional car showrooms. Now some of you who have played Grand Theft Auto 4 will know that dotted around the map there are some actual car shops where you can go in and either look at or steal the cars that are on display. And in Grand Theft Auto 5 and GT Online, there are some car dealerships but you can't actually access the interior to see what cars are inside. Obviously there's the exception of Simeon's dealership but specific manufacturer's dealerships can actually be found around the map but they aren't functional. So in terms of how this would work in GT Online, instead of going to the legendary motorsport website or the Southern San Andreas Super Autos website, you could actually travel to a dealership, whether it be Simeon's place or just another manufacturer specific place, and see the cars that you're interested in, in person to see if it's actually the car for you. Personally, I think this would be a great addition to GT Online as it would change the way that we go about purchasing cars and add a more realism effect to the whole process of buying new vehicles. Now there is currently a mod available for GTA 5 single player called Premium Deluxe Motorsport and it's actually the gameplay of this mod that you're seeing in the background. And basically what it does is it turns Simeon's dealership into a fully functional car dealership where you can go in and purchase new vehicles as you can see me doing in the background. Now obviously you wouldn't be able to purchase every vehicle in the game from here, but if this kind of system was to be implemented into the numerous car dealerships around San Andreas, then I do believe that this kind of system could be a great addition to GTA Online in the future. Alright, so last but certainly not least is a feature that I can't really see Rockstar adding due to the nature of it, but it would certainly make GTA Online a better place, at least on PC, and it's private sandbox lobbies for modders and modders only. Now as we touched on before, modders can be found across all platforms, but online modding is especially popular on the PC platform. And I will be honest with you, I don't mind modders as long as they don't abuse the power they have, but unfortunately, 9 out of 10 people who run mods online do abuse the power they have, and end up causing chaos across a lobby of people who just want to play the game properly. Now I don't encourage the use of mods and I don't and haven't run mods in GTA Online myself, but nowadays you don't have to be a modder in online to be affected by having mods installed, which is unfortunate because innocent people can have their accounts corrected, if you can see my air quotes, by Rockstar if a modder tampers with their stats, money or RP level which sometimes can cause more issues than it solves. Now this is why there needs to be a separate type of lobby that people who have altered their game to give them mod menus can go into and just play around with mods with other players without affecting other people or getting their accounts banned. Now we've discussed private sandbox lobbies in the past where players could have access to in-game props to have fun in free mode with, but private lobbies for people who play in online with mods would fix most if not all of the issues with modders in online. Now I can understand Rockstar banning people for running mods in online as it does ruin the game for other players, but with the amount of modders that are still around in GT Online, it just seems like a waste if all you're going to do is ban people when you could create a new type of lobby that separates modders from real players but doesn't allow them to alter their GT Online stats for when slash if they return to normal lobbies with normal players. Personally, I think that it's time to stop banning modders and just completely separate them from others to allow them the freedom of running mods without ruining the game for anyone else. Now obviously the banning feature would still have to be in place for those who choose to try and get around the private modder lobbies and enter normal ones, but this idea could change the way that GT Online works to make it more flexible for every type of player. Now just before we start heading out, I do want to say that I know that the new Grotti X80 Proto has just been released in GT Online, but since I've already done a video showing you guys the customization of the three new vehicles, I'm not going to do them again as I really just can't see the point in essentially making the same video twice. That said, I do want to make a speed test video between the X80 and the 811 compared to the other supercars in game like I did for the FMJ and the Reaper not too long ago. But obviously this does all depend on when the 811 is finally released in GTA Online. Alright, so I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. What do you think of the features on today's list? 
Would you do anything differently with these features? Or do you have an even better feature that you would like to see added to GTA Online? As always, be sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. Okay, so that's all I've got for you guys today. If you did go on to enjoy the video or you found it interesting at all, then do be sure to drop the video a like rating. And if you are new around here and you like my GTA 5 content, then why not hit that subscribe button? It only takes two seconds and it means that you won't miss any of my future uploads. With that said, I want to thank you guys for watching. Stay awesome and I'll see you guys in the next video.